Oh, man again? No. No, nope, you're good. We should. Uh, <laughs> it's seamless. Oh, but seamless. We are, we, are now, we are now back in a public session. All right. So. And I will, I will let um, Ray right know now. that she can join us. Okay. I'm going to try and pull up the agenda, which is usually what <laughs> Jeff would pull up on there. Do we have to roll, roll call to go back into regular session? We no. just roll called out of executive. No, we're, in, we're automatically in regular okay. session because we're here. Right. So we're in our session. We're coming back in at 6.33. Um, sorry, I'm trying to- Open forum. It's open forum? Yeah, the first, the first okay. item. So open forum. Mm -hmm. Okay, and Ray is now the host. Hi, Ray. Hi, Ray. Good evening. Hey. Hi Ray. Okay. Hi, Ray. Okay, Ray, you you are the you are the host now, so I don't think you need me anymore. Mike, thank you so much. No problem at all. You go ahead and text me if this whole thing falls apart when I leave, but I don't <laughs> but I, but I don't think it will. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Mike. Thank, thank you, Mike. Mike. Thank You're welcome. you. Bye bye. <laughs> okay. All right. How was everybody? We're good. good. I think we're at the open forum now. Okay, great. Is there anything for open forum? I don't. I guess for public who are joining us, you can raise your hand or type something in the Q and A. We think if you have um, a question for us. I don't see anything in the chat. Okay. Then I guess oh. we can move on to approval in the Q&A. Yep. Which looked pretty good to me. I had to reread a few things. Um, I just okay. had two little things. Um, and there's no page numbers, but I think it was the, maybe it's the third page. Um, one, two, three, four, fifth paragraph where it says Granger moved on to the topic. Mm -hmm. uh, in the fourth line down, there's no space between learning, comma, but really ticky tacky. Um, more relevant is that one, two, three, the third line from the bottom, it has Desi. Yeah, yes, yeah. <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> Spelled D E S I instead of D E S E. Right. Okay. Maybe maybe we should just put, I mean, because like a million years from now, people won't know what it means. Maybe we should just put what it is. Yeah, that's true. Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. And then we can say DESI for future. <laughs> okay. That was all I had. Yeah. Does anybody else have anything? Nothing. So this could be just picky. Um, same, the next paragraph, next paragraph down um it says there was a question by Catherine Clare about masking and and basically it said I you know I replied that mask wearing is not looked at I may have said that I don't know if that's really clear basically what I meant was it's not um a diff taken into consideration definitively in terms of quarantining or isolating because everybody wears masks differently so there's no way to determine right so maybe if you said you so i don't want it's kind of yeah just I mean, have a mask wearing does not change the quarantine period that's probably better i mean i just it, it wasn't yeah. like again i may have said it that way but said more as well i don't want it to come off like oh no we don't care <laughs> no but it does not change <laughs> it doesn't yeah quarantine right okay so, so, so we strike if we could just clean is not looked at and yeah. and not change the quarantine period okay and we can ask her to add um, yeah. page number. does not change the quarantine period okay got it on that same page, um, whenever you guys are ready, yeah. on the third paragraph, 
Uh, board members had lengthy discussion about mask wearing at public meetings are in favor of mandatory mask wearing. Residents have the option to join the meeting remotely if they do not want to wear a mask. I just want to clarify um, to join public meetings remotely instead of the. So maybe replace the with public and make yeah. it meetings. Yeah, that's better to be clear. Meetings. And just to be clear, um, that isn't necessarily true. Um, we do not have that the capability for every public meeting to be remote, according to the town manager's office. So I just want to clarify that. So then, okay. I, we could add um, when will hopefully or in in the future hopefully I don't know. Uh, okay. So which boards or committees that are public meetings? don't have remote access um according to the town manager's office they don't have the capability you need to have someone separate run all the equipment to make it a virtual meeting as well um and so according to them they don't have that capability for every committee public meeting public committee meeting that takes place in town I wasn't aware of that when we had our discussion. I had thought when no, we had No, I thought that um, it was an option when we had our meeting. Yeah. 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 But that's I mean, why I'm questioning which one, like, mm -hmm. who doesn't have the ability to have a remote meeting? Um, I can I can check for you that they were to, we were told that after. Okay. Well, I mean, this is what we said at the time. Under right. the that's what we said at the time. Had. Yep. Right. Yeah. So maybe. Yeah, I, I had thought that everyone did have that option. Me too. So I guess I thought that's what we were told. We'll have yeah. To look into that. I will. Um, okay. Okay. So, is there a motion to accept the minutes with the amendments made? Motion. I'll make that motion. Thanks, Michelle, and a second. I'll okay. second. I saw Joanne's hand first. Okay, you got that's it, Joanne. <laughs> I'm going to use the button. <laughs> <laughs> I might not see that. Okay, oh. all in favor, say aye. 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 Hey, Sean. Okay. How are you doing, hon? I think it was unanimous. unanimous. Michelle, you were you, I guess. Okay. I had somebody else's picture up. So. Aye. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, somebody was asking if we could provide a link to the draft minutes. Um, I can, if that's allowed. Yeah, no, we've shown them before, I think. And it says that Okay. the minute, the minutes link has the latest is the 510. <laughs> A few months ago. Yeah, because we don't usually post drafts. The, the, what right. it's posted oh. is the- Oh, maybe it's not allowed then. No, we only post the approvals. Okay. Okay, so Matt, I guess we only post approved. But we should have, like, Did we're you? doing August 9th right now, right? So we should have the more up to date ones. Yeah, there. right. Yeah. Right. So we so have an administrative assistant who is able to do that. <laughs> Well, and it's up to you as well. Um, a lot of boards do post their whole packet um, ahead of their meeting, and we can certainly do that if that's something that the board would like to do in the future, in which case those draft minutes would be in there. Yeah. Just an option. Okay. Well, anybody have any? I, I, I'm fine with that. I think it's great to have the information out there. I think it involves more people in what we're discussing. I thought it actually was posted, so I'm fine with that. Oh. I thought that was part of the the meeting posting was that that was put out for everybody. Um, as of right now, so they post the agenda, we post the agenda, and then we post the minutes once they're approved. Okay. But then the packet is available afterwards never oh interesting hmm. okay i don't know if there are times when there's anything in it that 
Yeah, it's, it's um, you know, in some cases, I guess, if we, for instance, you had something that needed to be confidential, like, um, I don't know, let's just use an example of a restaurant's recipe, um, which is confidential and maybe some information that they were putting in about their restaurant. But other than that, it's pretty transparent, everything. So the, it would be up to the you. The only thing I was wondering is if like all the plot plans and things like that ever feel like that, that's, I don't know. Yeah, I think those are all public record. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Then I guess, you know, if it's, I'm, I don't know, you want to make a motion to do that or not? Or? I don't think we need to vote on it. Okay, we can just, something we can, Ray can do when and if she's able to get that out there. <laughs> I'm happy to do it. Happy to do it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, our next agenda item is a big thank you to Jeff Stevens for his years of service to the Westford Health Department. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we just wanted to take a minute just to thank Jeff um, for all of his years of service here with the health department um, in several roles. So um, that's all we wish him all the best. He's been hired as the health director in Lemonstar, so we wish him all the best. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> Um, we're two minutes ahead. Do we need to wait two minutes? I think I see Matt on the call. Yeah, he is, yeah. is on the call. Um, the next agenda item is the variance request from Mr. James Sullivan to construct and share a private drinking water well at 10 Lawson Road and 2 Easy Street. Uh, zero Lawson. Oh, zero Lawson? Okay, it says, two. oh, zero Lawson and 2 Easy, sorry. Um, I guess, Ray, do you want to tell us where we're at with that? Oh, absolutely. So Matt is here this evening, and I believe Dr. Shane may also be on the call. He, They both are representing Mr. James Sullivan, who is looking to construct a private drinking water well um, on a new lot for Zero Lawson Road and 2 Easy Street. So we have met with them several times all part interested parties we've met uh we've spoken to neighbors we have spoken to town council as well with regards to putting together not only an o m or an operation and maintenance agreement between the both for everything you can think of as far as um, well testing what happens if something comes back high remediation systems um, legal questions so we reached out to town council with all of our concerns we said everything to them that the applicant sent as well uh, with regards to what they would agree to. Neighbors, all the neighbors in the surrounding area have agreed, uh, excuse me, have stated that they would be okay with the circumstance, would be fine with the circumstance. We did meet with um, Matt Waterman and Doug Duchesne as of late last week, just to wrap up everything and sent that to you. So in your packets, you have the O&M agreement, which would be filed on their deed. Uh, for both addresses as well as the easement. So I believe Doug or Matt, if you're out there, would wanted to give their side. Yep, I'm here. I'm present. And I know we're all trying to get into the meeting. Doug was thinking the waiting room. Is there, is there any way to check if he can be let in or does he need to try again and, and on Yeah, I don't see him in the waiting room. So um, I would just have him try and get in again. I know that I could bear with me for one minute. I'm going to just click over to my text. Yep, I don't see him in the attendee list or is panel there, list. Is there a way to invite him? I see the invite button. Should we? Yeah. I don't know how you do that. <laughs> Let me see. Matt's in there, um, but I don't see Dr. Shane, the attorney. No. And I also know that Mike Gross and um, Jim Selvin, who's the applicant, and Mike is, is one of the neighbors that has been working with Jim are on the call as well, if there's any questions. Um, but we'll, if you don't mind, we can give Doug just another minute and hopefully sure. he'll 
connect. I know he was, they were trying to send him fresh so that he could get in. I definitely appreciate that it looks like since we last met and discussed with you, a lot more has been sort of filled, flushed out and. Yeah, and, and, and I, to keep the meeting moving, Doug, if he comes in, certainly could, could put, fill in anything that I don't. Uh, and Doug needs to do late. I'm getting, I have to apologize, I'm getting text messages in. <laughs> um, hold on one second. I'm just going to put you on hold. Apologies. Stephanie, it does look like um, we have someone with a raised hand, Susan. Oh, okay. Condon. He says, Doug says he's in. He can see it. That might be. Hi, good evening, Doug. Hey. Okay. I I tried to. But we've lost him. Doug, is that you? Yes, it is. Oh, you're into Susan. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry about that. That's okay. Um, I'll try and see if I get in down to my own. Hold on. That's no. okay. I, I can hear him. I'm gonna take what I got. <laughs> Thank That's you. Good terrible. evening. Good evening. Thank you. Uh, are you guys ready for me? Yes. All right. Thank you. I apologize for the technical breakdown. Uh, Douglas DeShane representing uh, Jim Sullivan uh, with me this evening. As you know, Matt Waterman from Land Tech Consultants, Inc. Um, if the board, uh, with the board's pleasure, Mr. Sullivan would like to just make a, a quick introduction of himself. He's, we've been working hard with staff and I think he wants uh, to make a quick statement to the board and then I'll let Matt give you a very brief uh, rundown on the technical uh, status of the work we've been doing. And then I just have about a five minute or three or four minute uh, little statement and, and we can go from there if the, if the board's uh, acceptable with that. Thank you, yes, so. Mr. Sullivan. Is, is he in guys? I don't see a Mr. Sullivan. I know Mike was. I thought Mike was. I don't know if Jim is. I got another Susan. There's Hi, three Susan. James Sullivan. Yeah, so the only link that worked was one that Susan had sent over to us. I had the same issue that Doug had. I couldn't get in until I got the link that Susan had sent over to us. So I apologize. <laughs> so I think we're all Susan today. But uh, just real short, uh, my name is James Sullivan, the cu current resident, uh, 45 Mead Street in Tewksbury, former resident of 16 Pershing and 7 Knoll Re Road, Westford, uh, was in Westford for eight years prior to moving out. I'm the applicant on this agenda uh, for zero loss and roll. My goal in obtaining this variance is pretty simple for me. I basically just want to be closer to my kids. Um, they currently live in Westford with their mother and their stepfather. Um, over the past eight years, I've coached in the town. I'm very involved in the town. In my honest opinion, I feel like this is my only shot to get back in town. Um, and I just want to say I appreciate all the effort and the time that you guys have put into this the board, the Board of Health, um, and also the neighbors who have been nothing but amazing and welcoming me into this possible opportunity. So I want to thank them. And um, I truly hope this variance will be granted based on the information that's going to be provided tonight. So thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, and, and, and I'll take over from there. Um, I think, and to kind of reiterate what Ray had said, um, it's just that since we've last seen the board, and I know we continued the last hearing because we were still waiting to hear on a couple items, um, but we wanted to make sure that the board had everything in the packet. Doug worked with the town council on an easement agreement. We included a draft um, easement plan that would go with that. If it were to move forward, that would at the registry um there was an escrow account that um we set up and agreed to and doug can get to the specifics on that um includes initial deposit of about ten thousand dollars for him then an annual five hundred dollars per year ongoing uh, maintenance and, and water sampling uh that, that would be split 50 50 between the two owners of, of zero lawson road and a new east um, and I'm ninety percent sure that Doug will also mention that that money gets replenished um, when it gets used up, um, so that there's always money waiting um, for the for the potential next um, 
problem with the well or, or anything that needs to get fixed. Um, we put together an O&M manual, um, just similar to what we do a lot of with the, the stormwater management systems nowadays. Um, it's it's kind of like the simplified version of, of what's on the lot, who's responsible for maintaining it, um, and, and the annual sampling. Um, there is a water sample test that were done on the, the, the existing well at Too Easy Street that we'd be connecting into. Um, there's currently water treatment systems that are in place. Um, the, the new house at Zero Lawson Road, if this was to move forward, would have the same water treatment systems to, uh, for uranium and radon, which is a reverse osmosis system and a, either a charcoal or an aeration type filter uh, treat the, the radon or vice versa. Um, and, and those all come with required maintenance. Um, so that it just spells out the requirement to have this wells and the water treatment systems inspected, sampled, um, and maintained. So, and that would be part of, and one of the things that we would do is include that as an attachment to the easement agreement. Um, it would be just referenced saying in accordance with the O&M manual. Um, so that O&M manual will get recorded at the registry of deeds with the draft easement and the easement plan. Um, just we, we do it with the stormwater management systems and, and, and I'm sure you're familiar with the new stormwater bylaw in town. Um, so a lot of those get the O&M manuals, those get recorded at the registry. Um, we do the same thing with conservation, with water conditions, and then with an O&M manual that's associated with a, a notice of intent in town for a wetland filing. Um, that typically will get referenced and recorded um, with the, the order condition format. Um, so this, uh, we were just kind of thinking out loud that this, you know, this makes sense to kind of do the same, be consistent with this one as well. Um, and I know Ray brought up a couple of things at our technical review meeting last week, uh, prior to building permit and we would have the well inspected uh, as part of the building department's requirements for any new construction. Um, you have to have your well sampled. So we, we had no issues with that. And we would be required to do that um, prior to our building permit. And then have the water treatment system inspected for Too Easy Street um, by a licensed uh, well maintenance contractor, um, which is typically the well drillers, uh, just to have the, the water treatment systems a report on record um, for the existing water treatment systems at Too Easy Street that they're functioning and operational. Um, and then we were also working with um, Abby um, in the Board of Health Office on the, on the final septic plans. Um, there's a couple of typos that we have and we were getting into the, we have a couple of changes. They're, they're just technical corrections. There's nothing with the septic plan, um, but we would obviously this would move forward, um, finalize and correct those things, get that back up to the board. Doug, you. I'll turn it over to you if you want to elaborate on, on, on what you have. Thank you, Maddie. And um, you, actually, you you hit on a lot of the things I was going to say. So I will uh, I will sort through. Um, again, as Maddie mentioned, I have uh, completed the easement agreement and the easement plan, uh, working with staff and council. Um, it, it is a very comprehensive and detailed document, which not only creates the easement itself, but it also addresses all of the terms and conditions and the obligations of the parties relating to the installation, the maintenance, the testing, uh, pre-construction, annual testing, and most importantly, the financial obligations of the parties here. Um, we've laid this out uh, in a very precise manner. As Maddie said, um, uh, we have proposed, I know that at a previous meeting, there was a discussion of perhaps a $5,000 bond. I think uh, the board may have thought that was a little uh, light. Uh, so we've doubled that uh, to 10,000. Uh, we are proposing an annual contribution of 500, which in and of itself uh, should more than cover any annual testing that is gonna be required. Uh, as part of this arrangement, uh, if it's approved. Uh, and we have set it up so that if in the event there is an issue and the $10,000 has to be um, utilized or any part thereof, uh, that the parties will, uh, within that same fiscal year, 
bring the fund back up to $10,000. So it's not like this fund is going to be, you know, picked away at, and then at some point there won't be any money. This, this fund, if it's even used at any point, will be brought up back to the 10,000 within the same fiscal year that it is uh, utilized. So this, these agreements that have been put in, are to be put in place uh, were generated not only by, you know, myself originally, but through town council's um, review and comment, but also we did take recommendations and requirements from previous meetings with the board and as well as uh, a lot of work with staff. So I really believe these are some of the more comprehensive and detailed uh, easement agreements that I've ever worked on. Um, I'll remind the board that this will be recorded. Uh, all of these documents will be recorded so that it will act as not only a, um, a permanent legal record for the people that own the home today, but for any potential future owners, it will not only act as the, the guideline for their future use, but more importantly, as a notice. If anyone's buying this property, it will become readily apparent early on this is you know that there is a shared well and that the buyer will know that in advance and make a determination whether that's something they are comfortable with or not so um I, the, the legal stuff is as rock solid as it can be um as maddie said uh he has been working with staff now for a number of months uh to address comments of the board and, and staff and i believe they've done a great job of putting together a very solid set of technical documents um, including and most importantly the O&M uh, manual and plan that will outline again uh, the required annual testing and maintenance of, of the well, the shared systems and the individual uh, treatment systems within the homes. Um, therefore, I think that you know all the legal documents and technical stuff has been addressed to a point where we're very comfortable proposing that uh, this, this system would uh, be very protective of public health and safety and would not pose uh, a, a situation for anyone uh, involved or in the neighborhood. Um, clearly, this is a very unique situation. Um, uh, there are very few uh, legally grandfathered buildable lots left in Westford, although one pops up now and again. Um, I think what you would agree with, mostly what we see are people trying to turn pieces of property into buildable lots or subdividing land into multiple lots. And, you know, uh, it w it's certainly not unreasonable for people to look for shared wells in those situations, but that's a very different scenario. That's where people are trying to make something buildable or create individual lots that they can't meet the requirements of. This lot has been, uh, you know, in town as a buildable lot for well over 70 years, and, and so it is very unique. Uh, Mr. Sullivan, as he said, wants to build a small one-bedroom home for himself so he can be near his kids, and he has been fortunate enough to be embraced by his neighbors who have just been so uh, amazingly supportive. And most importantly, he's met a neighbor, uh, Ms. Condi, who is just uh, incredible in her generosity and willing to work with Jim. Um, Although I think that comes from experience because Ms. Condi's home was on a shared well with the other homes on Easy Street for many, many, many years since they were originally built. So um, she's not going into this without great knowledge and experience on what it's like. And she said that she never had an issue and she's just happy to help Mr. Sullivan. So um, clearly unique, uh, finding neighbors who, who wanna help uh, something like this rather than, as we sometimes say, they fight it. So in closing, um, I believe Mr. Sullivan has shown significant hardship and necessity for this variance. Uh, he's addressed all the technical and legal requirements to make it rock solid and, and provide the board comfort that this will not be an issue going forward. And so I would respectfully ask the board to consider his variance and uh, of course, Mr. Waterman, Mr. Sullivan, and I are here to answer any questions the board might have, or if you need any additional information, uh, we'll do anything we can to get it to you. Thank you. Doug, can I ask, add one thing before we go to the board? I'm sorry. 
Doug, did you want to talk about um, the, the potential agreement? Well, uh, yeah, I, and, and I'm not sure whether this is germane to the board or not, but um, um, Mr. Sullivan and his neighbor have come to an agreement where they are going to sign, if this is a, approved, they're going to actually sign a right of first refusal document so that if either one of them does find themselves in a position uh, that they want to sell their home, their neighbor with whom they share a well will have first uh, opportunity to do that. So that if Mr. Sullivan someday has an opportunity to, to own a bigger home, uh, his neighbor's home or vice versa, um, they've agreed to that. They, they've become very close friends in this whole deal. I think it's important just, I know it's not from a variant standpoint, but just, I know there's interest in both sides that if either one sells that they both have the opportunity to, to kind of change the dynamics of the shared well to be more of a common ownership with two properties. It's, 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 I just thought it was important to kind of mention in closing. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you all. Ray, did you have anything you wanted to say about how you all feel before anybody else has questions? Sure, so, um, you know, to be honest, uh, we were a little concerned. We don't have anyone in the community that shares two two properties that share a private drinking water well. Typically, as you know, for a public drinking water supply, uh, which we do have many in town, uh, it's usually 15 homes or more, and that's through the DEP, uh, the Department of Environmental Protection. Um, so this is new for us. Um, doesn't mean it can't happen, certainly, and we're not open open to it, um, but we want to make sure the protections are in place, not only for the environment, our water supply. Um, and it's, it is, I will say it's not a unique to see radon or uranium or arsenic to exceed in private drinking water wells here in Westford. It's very common. Um, so a lot of folks do have remediation systems. We did sit down with them several times to make sure that they put together everything we wanted. Um, they did notify all the abutters um, I do believe this is a unique situation. Um, I clearly, as you, I don't want to see every new subdivision think we can all share well, um, you know, just because of the oversight and, and maintenance of looking at that, so. Okay, but you feel comfortable with the current? We do, we do, and that's Abby, myself, and the department. Mm -hmm. Okay, and legal signed off and looked at everything and seemed to feel comfortable as well. They did, yes, they did, yep. Does anybody else have questions, Zach? Um, thank you for the work that uh, uh, you did, Ray, and, and that Matt and, and Doug did here. I just had a question, it's probably for Doug, which is uh, down the road, the owners of this well are two, um, two uh, Easy Street and Zero Lawson. Um, if both owners, well, if they determine later that they need more money, let's say, in the pot, um, is it, do both have to agree on that, or can one uh determine that? Like what, what happens when 50 years from now, 100 years from now, they need to change that agreement slightly? Who, how does that work? Um, the owners have the right to uh, change the agreement by mutual agreement. They do both have to be party to any amendment. Um, in terms of needing more money, the document clearly plays out that the parties will split any costs necessary um, in excess of the escrow money, and both parties will agree to keep the $10,000 escrow fund at $10,000 and the additional 500 a year. So um, it's not like a one party could force a change, but they are both legally obligated to pay their share if there is an, you know, a, a necessity for money above and beyond the fund. So they are both legally bound to that. Okay. But in terms of just say agreeing to raise it to 600 or you know 1,000 a year, that would be have to be by mutual agreement unless it, there's a requirement for that money in a given year. So that, you know again, we, give, we get over the, we use money out of the 10 and for some reason that's not gonna be enough, then whatever the cost required, they're legally required to share, yes. Great, thank you. Any other questions from the board? Okay, seeing none, would anybody like to make a motion to accept this variance? As 
that what we're is it yes a variance request <laughs> I'll make the motion. Okay, Sue makes the motion. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, is there a second? I'll second it. Okay, Joanne seconds. All in favor, say aye. 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 And Mich okay, I heard Michelle. All right, <laughs> motion passes you. Yeah, everybody's yeah. muted for a while. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. And we appreciate that you were very diligent in looking at our concerns and addressing those and trying to make it a very comprehensive and thoughtful document. Yeah. Well, thank you. I really appreciate the board's time, but I, I really have to thank your staff. We took up a lot of their time. I'm sorry, but uh, this was important to all of us and they really stepped up. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks, Ray. Thanks, so no happy. problem. Thank you. Thanks. Good evening, guys. Good night. Okay, um, our next agenda item is the review of an open meeting law complaint received from Karen Ross, 20 Poly Road, related to the Board of Health's action taken on August 9th, 2021 to require all in-person public meeting participants to wear face coverings. Marie, I think you have something? Yes, so I did put in your packet the complaint uh, so that you're able to view that. We are required uh, by law to respond in a written um, response to both the applicant and the attorney general's office. I did reach out to town council um, in respect to um, how we are about to go about re to respond to the complaint. Um, he did ask that I read the statement this evening um, and that any discussion that wants to take place is, is certainly within reason. So if you're okay with that, I'll read the statement. So Thank he, you, sure. So he has on September 1st, 2021, the board received a complaint that it violated the open meeting law during its August 9th, 2021 meeting relative to its discussion and vote of an indoor mask requirement for public buildings. We have received this complaint uh, with town council and we do not believe that there was a violation of the open meeting law because the discussion arose during the course of a properly posted public meeting and was not anticipated by the chair. For anyone interested in the discussion that took place during the August 9, 2021 meeting, you can view the recording of the meeting on Westford Cat's website and we will have a further discussion of the matter during this meeting tonight. With regard to the complaint, we are required to formally respond to the Attorney General and the complaint. Town Council has offered to prepare a response on our behalf, which we've accepted. Therefore, um, this is Greg Corbo uh, speaking on behalf of Town Council. Uh, he says, therefore, I move that the board vote to acknowledge receipt of the open meeting law complaint relating to August 9, 2021 meeting, and that the board authorize Town Council to respond on its behalf and they asked uh, for a roll call vote. So um, yes, according to town council, Greg, when I spoke to him today, he did say that at any point, as long as the, ch the chair and the board are not aware of a discussion item, if it comes up, someone requests something during any kind of board of health meeting that has been formally posted, you do have every right to have a discussion and vote on that item. So um, really up to you if you'd like me to proceed and have them respond on your behalf. And that's what we're supposed to have a roll call vote on? Correct. Okay. I'll make that motion. Thank you, Zach. Motion made, is there a second? I'll second. second. Sue seconds. Um, so all in favor of, oh no. Roll call. <laughs> uh, let's see who, please indicate it. when I say your name, if, that you are in, if you are in favor of having Ray respond through the attorneys to this complaint. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, Joanne. Uh, point of order, I thought it was, we are authorizing town council to respond. Okay, yes. The, <laughs> I was saying that we were la having Ray tell town council that they could respond. So the point of order is that we are we are authorizing town council to yep. respond. To the yep. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, so I have Joanne. Yes. Uh, Sue. Yes. Zach. Yes. Michelle. Yes. And Stephanie, yes. 
So that passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. Um, our next, well, wait, now we're ahead. No, we're not. <laughs> wait, okay. <laughs> COVID-19 updates and discussion and review of mask covering recommendations and mandates. Um, do, Ray, do you have our update on numbers and things in town? Yes, so uh, I just wanted to let everyone know that Gail's on vacation. <clears throat> she left on Friday and she's out this week. So um, I am still waiting for the state immunization program, which is called MAVEN for access, <clears throat> excuse me, for access to those numbers. So a weekly, Westford, the health department always posts our active cases on our Facebook page, social media, and web pages. Uh, with that, um, I turned to Sue and Kathy Bordeaux, which they are so graciously working so hard to help us um, with our not only our contact tracing, but helping us with those reports. Um, my understanding is that we have 26 active cases, positive cases here in Westford as of today. So when we post those numbers, those are for the, that actual day uh, for the active cases that we have going on in here in town. Um, I would just like to review that this board has implemented a mandate for mass coverings for both um, public indoor public meetings, committee meetings, and a recommendation has been set by this board for all town employees and all uh, public buildings to wear masks or a mask covering, I should say, to be clear. Um, and then I know Sue wanted to speak a little bit about maybe possibly just sharing some education about what's happening in the schools here, um, just so parents feel a little more comfortable. Sure, thanks Sue. If you would do that, and then I have something I'd like to say as well. Um, so thanks Ray, and I have to say Ray's doing an incredible job with like a lot of things being put on her that she is doing on her own. So thank you, Ray. And sure. um, and the, the report might not be completely accurate. I pulled it and did it as best I could. Uh, a lot of cases have had to go to Contact Tracing Collaborative because we did have quite a, um, quite a few more come in or at, toward the end of the summer. And that's when Kathy and I started helping again and the school nurses are doing an incredible job of helping as well. Um, in the schools, there is some talk. I know Ray has gotten lots of phone calls from, from parents um, and a lot of it has to do with what testing is gonna be done in the school system. Um, right now, uh, the one that I think Westford is going to take part in is called the test and stay protocol. And um, there's a lot of moving parts to this right now. If we do it, we're not gonna start till October. And one thing people need to know is that we need permission from parents in order to do it. The test and stay is only, only, only for those students that are identified as close contacts while at school. If they are identified as close contacts while they're in the community, they are not eligible for this testing. Um, and and uh, in terms of quarantine, when if a child is identified as a close contact in the school system and they are part of this testing protocol, their quarantine outside of school is unchanged for the typical quarantine, meaning they don't get to go to their soccer practice in town um, or any other events outside of school activities. Um, and the test and stay, they would get tested every day for that period of time. And as school nurses, we are overwhelmed by the thought of it. Um, and we are hoping that if it does happen, it will happen in one central location and that it will not happen um, with the school nurses doing the testing. Um, right now, all of us are overwhelmed in the school system. Um, I think at the end of the school year or the end of the summer, DESE gave, uh, rec they gave the schools uh, a lot of exemptions for what close contacts would be. And as school nurses, we're struggling a lot because there weren't, wasn't a lot of guidance for staff around this issue. The elementary school nurses are in particularly stressed because none of those children at that level are vaccinated. Um, and you know there hasn't been a requirement that there has to be distancing in the cafeteria and things like that, which has created a lot of unrest with parents. Um, I want parents to know it's created a lot of unrest with the nurses as well. And uh, I am a huge advocate for being back at school and I'm grateful that we're back at school. 
but we also need to make sure we're keeping children safe. I have begun doing the contact tracing again in Westford and also in Tewkesbury, and I am so sad by how much, uh, how many cases are happening. And as a nurse, I am truly struggling, struggling, struggling with people who are choosing not to get vaccinated. Um, children do not have a choice. And for those of us who do uh, are able to get vaccinated, I beg of you to do so, so that we can um, start getting a hold of this virus. We are seeing breakthrough. And what I've heard from people about breakthrough is, so what's the point of getting vaccinated? In my experience, every case of breakthrough has come from an unvaccinated person starting the process. So again, I'm not giving you facts. I'm sharing with you in my experience with every contact, case, contact um, tracing case I've done, every single one who has come, you know, had a breakthrough, it started with an unvaccinated individual. So again, I'm very concerned about the young children in the school system. I wanna keep everybody safe. And we all are watching the news and we're seeing that the hospitals are getting um, bombarded, children are getting sicker. And I have to say, if I was a, a, a nurse or a doctor in the hospital right now, I would be so burnt out with the amount of people coming in right now, taking up ICU and hospital beds, and then seeing that they weren't vaccinated and they could ch have chosen to do so. Um, I personally am struggling as a medical person. Uh, so I just wanted to share with you as a nurse and as a Board of Health member, how, how much I advocate for doing everything we can to keep everybody safe. Um, and I'm a huge, huge supporter of mask wearing uh, and have now been wearing a mask everywhere I go because what I've realized is I'm vaccinated, but a lot of people are not. And they are going into stores and into places when it says right on the door, if you're not vaccinated to wear a mask and they're not being tr truthful. So. Um, just put it out there right now that as, again, Board of Health and school board member, I mean, um, a nurse, a school nurse, uh, I want to see our town do the right thing and continue to keep our students, our staff, and our families safe. Thank you, Sue. Um, I wanted to say that I received and read a lot of emails and messages from people in town, and I appreciate that they have taken the time to share their opinions and concerns. And with these in mind, I've been reviewing the data very carefully from our town and other towns in the area. And in particular, I've been really sad to see the cases in Westford increasing and increasing at a faster pace than in many other areas. In particular, I've been watching our rates as compared to Belmont who imposed a mask, indoor mask mandate mid-August. Belmont has a similar population. Their numbers were similar to ours but since then our positive cases have been rapidly outpacing theirs. And with this trend in mind and our current rates of positivity and overall case numbers and the goal of keeping our kids in school um, as well as keeping people in the community healthy, I would like to propose that we implement an indoor mask mandate um, that we would review at every one of our board meetings <laughs> And that I think, you know, with what we're seeing and with the contagious level of the Delta variant, I have not wanted to do this. I would wanted to let people get vaccinated. I know we have high levels of vaccination in town, but it's not enough right now. And that's what we're seeing. I looked at all the towns around us and Westford is among the worst in Middlesex County on a per population basis. We are among the worst towns. And that's concerning because we want these kids in school. Um, so, you know, and, and I know a lot of people say, well, kids don't get very sick, but we're, a lot, we're seeing changes in that. We're seeing more and more pediatric cases. And when kids get sick, you have to keep in mind, I had a doctor was talking about every time a child gets sick, a parent needs to stay home from work. Siblings are quarantined. A child misses out on a week of school. And so these illnesses are not as mild and as trivial as they are being portrayed by many. And I think it's a real concern. Sue? Um, the other thing we have to keep in mind, and again, I'm a huge advocate for being back in school. I wanted us back in school last year, but um, this year we don't have any option for remote learning. So, which again, I do agree with that, but I think there's a lot of unrest now about when, when children are missing uh, weeks of school. And 
again, with this contact tracing, what sometimes happen, and, and I've seen it in families, is you know, it will, it, it, it'll come into the home and everybody's doing the right thing. And, and um, you know, the, the child's in quarantine, for example, and then, um, then another person tests positive in the house and the quarantine starts all over again. And, and then another person tests positive. So kid, students can be out of school for two weeks, two, three weeks. And, and again, what they're doing now in the school system is they're treating it as um, an absent, like a, as though they had the flu, pneumonia or something like that. And yes, we have the Google Classroom and, and they can do work at home, but there's no option right now especially, you know, I know middle school and younger level to do the online type of, uh, you know, uh, learning. And, and what you just said too, Stephanie, you know, we have staff members that have young children and if their young children, daycare closed down, things like that, those educators also then have to stay home. So there is so much to this that is, I don't think people understand the ramifications for families when there is a positive case. And you know, there are mitigating factors that we all can do. And one of them is to get that damn vaccine, you know, and wear our masks and stay home when we're sick. There are all things that we can do. And if we all just kept following this protocol, I, I think we would get a way better handle on this virus. Do any other board members have thoughts or comments on this topic? I absolutely agree with the indoor mask mandate. I just want to make sure that, um, that we're defining all indoor areas? Are, are there any exceptions, gyms, et cetera, or is it everywhere? The most of the ones that I've been reading from other towns do not accept gyms or other places. They're having it on all public or places where public gather. Okay. And places yeah. of worship too, I would think. And places of yeah. worship. So it mimics back to when it was a state mandate. Um, I know, you know, we got examples of different communities. I, I know at least a few more um, that have done that. And it, it does, it's just, it's, it, it's indoors, just like it was before. I, um, I'm in agreement. I have no problem with any of it. <laughs> I just want to make sure that, you know, again, we are thoughtful about how we go about this. I think um, if that's the way know that we're heading that we have we, we may have to you know meet a couple more times you know outside our regular meeting times to put this together and then you know make sure everybody knows and give, give it you know it's proper announcement um you know to the community so that's all you know that's all i have to say there i just want to make sure that when we do it um you know it is thoughtful and it is includes everything we're not going to try to with the exemption of um, someone with a medical issue, um, we have to put that exemption in there, but everything is included and then we review it, you know, every time that we need. Right, I think it, we need to be very clear that, you know, the state did remind us that with any mask mandates that we put in place, they want them, they want us to review them regularly, at least at every meeting and, and that we would do that. Zach. Um, I, I agree too, Stephanie. I think you brought up a really good point that uh, in our uh, communities, surrounding communities where our caseload is growing the fastest, but I think it's important that maybe we reiterate the numbers. So what I heard was that we have 26 active cases in town today. Um, do we have either Ray or maybe Sue um, numbers that the, the public can hear about uh, you know how that's been going up since school is opened, uh, just so they can get a handle on it. Maybe if they haven't been following this, you know where we're, what we're seeing happening, what the trend is. We, go ahead. Sue. Ray, Ray, do you want me to? Um, yeah, yeah. So right now, and um, I'll send. Like I said, I I tried my best to put it together just this afternoon. Um, it's a little tricky. I've never pulled this report this way, um, and there's. There were a lot of cases sent to the contact tracing collaborative. So I was looking at it by dates as well, but currently there's 13 children or 13, you know, school age, 18 and under with active cases. Um, and then, you know, then it's, you know, 19 to 29, there's three, 30 to 39, one, 40 to 49, seven cases, 50 and over two. Uh, we had, I think 10 cases at Westford Academy. Um, and that was, you know, I think what's happening is parents are getting letters and the way we have to do it in the school is every time that there is a positive 
we have to send out a letter and it can be overwhelming, but that's what's happening. So I think parents are saying, what the heck is going on? Is this all related to a party? Is it something, you know? And, and honestly, it, it, there hasn't been one particular thing and it's not happening at school, I have to tell you. So I should say right off the bat, um, this 10 cases is not spreading through the school. It is, it is it's, it's um, children have tested, students have tested positive uh, we've had a few that have been breakthrough cases, and we've had a few of students that just were not vaccinated, and then other students, um, you know, ended up testing positive, or it came into the home and somebody else in the family got it, um, that type of thing. What we're seeing with the breakthrough cases is typically people are not getting that sick with it. Unfortunately, they still have to isolate for the full 10 days. Uh, so again, it's time away from learning. Um, and, and, you know, I, it, it is concerning. At the end of the summer, there were so many cases. Poor Gail was just overwhelmed because there was an outbreak at the kids' league. And you know, remember, those children could not be vaccinated. And what happened was, I want to say, I'm not sure. I think there were about 20, 20 cases, Ray, somewhere around there. Correct. Correct. Now, those 20 cases ended up leading to family members get, you know, uh, testing positive as well. So that that's been the trend of it. But Zach, the question you asked, it's not spreading through the school right now. It's not. That's but what we want to stop. <laughs> yeah. But obviously we don't. Yeah. That's our worry. And that's why, you know, and, and even we've had discussions, you know, with, if, with, when you're outside, there's no contact tracing, which I'm a little, um, so, we, you know, I'm encouraging, you know, get outside, get, get your students outside, get classes outside, get, you know, that kind of thing. So, because the more time that we spend outside, um, the better off we're going to be. And obviously I know we have classrooms, but, you know, trying to think outside the box sometime to how we can do this. And again, keep everybody safe. I know I work at Stony Brook and the kids eat lunch every day outside. That's the middle school, unless the weather is inclement. And then they have two different spots at school for it. So, you know, I think the administrators and schools and nurses are doing a good job trying to think outside the box on how we can safely do this and, and not have to shut down again. And, and I think to you, oh, just just to finish up, I just to you, um, the, the, I had kind of thought test and stay was going to be happening sooner than it is happening. And so that's one of the reasons why I'm in favor of this, uh, because we don't really have that in place yet. I mean, it it's, sounds like it is going to be a hard thing to, uh, to unroll. And if you could just answer Stephanie or Sue uh, or Ray, um, in cafeterias, will this be, you know, when kids do have to go back inside for cafeterias, would this be masks off only during eating? Yeah, so cafeterias has been the biggest bone of contention with a lot of parents um, because, you know, when you really think about it, you know, it's three feet. So the close contacts at school, right? I mean, this is the exemption. If you're more than three feet apart with a mask on, you're not considered a close contact. Remember, that's only at school. On the outside world, it's still six feet, but only for school. So in the cafeteria, Again, that's tricky to because really you're ta talking they should be six feet apart if they don't have a mask on, you know. So the the lunch room issue is probably the most stressful issue for all of us working in the schools. And hopefully Desi is hearing that and maybe working on encouraging some other options. Yeah. <laughs> and or that Westford is thinking of some other solutions. I don't know. Well, again, I think they are, they are, you know, there are definitely thoughts about it, but um, I know again, for us eating outside that there's no, con there's no close context. Cause remember there's no close. Con so if but they I don't think, yeah. So to Zach's question, I don't know that if we did an indoor mask mandate, it would impact the school lunch. But I'm for, I mean, yeah. Well, you know, oh, Des Desi is, has its own yeah. entity. Yeah. 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 But the, the thing that I wanted to um, kind of, talk about in, in what Sue has said, and I don't want it to get lost if anybody's listening or watches this afterwards because it's, it's all about the schools and schools. The point is um, it's not spreading through the schools. So it's spreading through the community, which is why we need to look at the community from the Board of Health and the mask mandate is an important thing that we need to do. I don't want people um, to get the wrong idea and start going, well, you know, isn't, it was only two adults. So why are we masking the adults, mask the kids in schools? 
it's a family issue and it is um, a community-wide issue. So it's not that these kids are getting it, it or infected, if you will, in the school setting. They're getting, it's, it's all happening in the community. Right, and, thank you very much. And now I think that's, you know, needs to kind of, um, you know, be out there for people to think about. Yeah, thank you, Joanne. I think that's really important, but that's really critical. Ray? I just wanted to add um, two things. The test and stay, I just wanted to clarify to the public that that is not ready statewide for all schools. So it's not just Westford, it's not prepared for that. Um, that is statewide, that is not ready. And you know, we recently heard this week from the Department of Public Health, they're still working on it. So as soon as we hear, we'll certainly let the public know. Um, the second thing is, I just wanted to verify um, the numbers. Uh, when we compared and contrast last year, um, our numbers were a lot lower, actually, our cases. And we had mask mandates. It was a state mandate at the time, but it was to protect our vulnerable population, our elderly. And here we are exactly one year later. And I just wanted to add to Joanne's point that you know, the hope is to wear, have, require mask mandates for to protect our our next vulnerable population, which is which is our families and our kids here in, in Westford. So I just wanted to add that. Thank you, Ray. Yeah, very much. I think that's important. But, um, well, I, I know some people have brought up in the past, and again, in my thought on this, it's very much attentive to the fact that we may never completely stamp COVID out. That's not necessarily the goal, but the goal is the hospitals are filling up again and also we have a new vulnerable population and those are the kids who cannot be vaccinated yet. Um, and so that is my thoughts. Sue, I see your hand, you're muted yeah, though. Just one more quick thing. Um, and I had talked to Ray about this er er earlier too. So uh, the buy next now antigen tests, which are, are great. You could buy them at CVS and Walgreens and I've been a big advocate of it. Um, if you take one of those at home and it's positive, you need to follow up with a PCR because or make sure it's at least registered because I am finding people will test positive with the buy next now and it does not become part of our numbers, okay? So it's not completely accurate. So if people are doing that buy next now at home, which again, can be helpful, um, but I still, if you're symptomatic and you do one of those tests, I, I truly implore you to make sure that it's being recorded within our numbers and it can be done that way Again, I, I wish people would get that PCR test to, to, um, to confirm it. Um, if not, on the buy next now, there is a way you can report it, but it has to be reported. You just can't take it and then say, I'm positive because I've known several people that I heard they were positive, never ever came into Maven, which is where we get all our reporting from. Right, I believe that, I don't wanna say this to <laughs> flood the health department, but that is one of the options that would be a requirement that it does get reported somehow, whether that is through taking a PCR where it will get recorded or calling the health department to self-report a positive case. But we still only put those, the, the, if someone calls and said, I had a positive Binax, um, it isn't a positive. It's a, yeah. It, it's a um, suspect. It, it's a suspect. We can put it into Maven and we can follow it, but it can't, it won't get, um, counted as a positive until they have a PCR follow-up that, or, um, because we, there's no way to know who actually took it. Right. It's, it's a conundrum, but they are, they do have their uses for sure, but it, it is kind of messing up the numbers a little. All right. Thank you. So am I allowed or does somebody else want to make <laughs> Uh, I will. So can I, can I ask you what you were just saying? Can we also mandate that if they test positive? I mean, is that something you can do too? Or is that two separate things? Should we just focus on the mask thing right now? Yeah. Okay. I would absolutely um, like to make the motion to mandate uh, mask wearing in every public. I mean, any um, in what? Oh, indoor. Indoor setting. In any indoor setting in Westford. Um, excluding private residences or not? Do we want to say? In, so how, how does I it work? Yeah. Yes, please, John. Yeah. Um, 
clarifying. Yeah. Um, if we want to take a, are we taking a vote right now to say that this is what we want to do? We don't have anything in writing. We don't have anything in place. Correct. So it's not becoming, you know, if this is not happening tonight. Got it. We're just taking a vote to say that this is what we, what we're going, what we all want to pursue and then go to the next step, which is have something presented to us in writing to mm -hmm. review and maybe set up a special meeting in a week or two. So. That sounds good. How long do we need? Correct? Yeah. Okay. What about a date? Like when? To put it into place? Yeah. yeah. We have, well, we have to review the language first. That may yeah. take one or two tries, hopefully right. not, but. Unless so I we just adopt one of the ones that is available to us from one of the other communities that has already put one in place. So I, I do have several communities yeah. um, examples and I can certainly put together a draft for you um, that you could you could review and you know I could send you some others so you could compare and contrast. I, I would love to have it by October 1st. I mean, I, I think. So I think I... we don't need to really vote on anything right now. Okay. And I don't know, hash this out to be sure. Um, we're all in agreement. So the next step would be to present us a draft as, as soon as possible. And if it, you know, I'd rather have a draft, not here's two or three to pick from, you know, go through and, and pick the best parts of, you know, the different ones and present us with a draft. Um, and then if we have to have a meeting next week or the week after, we do, you know, kind of thing. Yeah, how soon are we able to meet again? It's up to you when you when you can all meet. meet every week, you know, if I did all this, remember? So I mean, we can. Right. No, I just didn't know if we had to post it. Yes. Oh, is it like forty-eight hours? Five days. Five days. Okay. Um, I'm in favor of meeting as soon as we can because. Well, we got to give Ray time to put together. <laughs> so. You know, and all those other things that she does. <laughs> Next so I could get, I could get it done as soon as possible. Um, I would it's like Monday just... is my birthday, and I might not be. Put on your birthday. Can't do we need to meet? Uh, like can't we can't do it through? Um... No. Okay. Email. Mm -mm. No. So I can put to, together a draft as soon as possible, and we can certainly post the meeting. Um, I would like to just check with legal to make sure we're good on the draft um, too, so that you feel more comfortable with what we've put together. You know, certainly whatever changes you want to make to it, but at least the draft is legal and um, good to go. So um, can you- and Most of the drafts that I've seen from towns, it, 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 they don't put it into place the following day. It's typically, you know, when you're seeing the date, then there's a date associated with it. So there is work that needs to be done on that. You can't just, somebody's asking a question, I think about why can't we implement this tomorrow? It's not that simple, so. And we ha can't discuss this together outside of open the meeting. meeting. Yeah. Right. yeah, I mean, we can look at the draft, but we can't talk about it. So. And the thing is too, um, just so the public's aware, there's always an enforcement piece. And so, you know, you have to have the capability to be able to enforce that and staff. Um, and as you all know, we're quite sure. <laughs> you know, as you're putting that draft together, Ray had put a couple options and most of the towns that have an enforcement piece listed, it sounds like they've put the $300 fine that was in place previously, um, yeah. which I'm fine with. And that's basically the problem. Yeah. Um, just looking at Winchester's, it looks like it probably covers everything that I think the board is thinking. Um, maybe it makes sense to, if that's what the board agrees with, um, maybe have that as like a starting off point. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Like, yeah. I like that one too. I can get you Lexington's too. Okay. So when would we be able to meet then? When would people be available? can meet any night this week um, if your birthday is Monday, Tuesday. Yeah, I'm available anytime this week. Anytime, yep. This week? 
Next week? Next week, yeah. Should oh, be any time. Yeah, next week. Next week, too. Um, yeah, just not Monday. So, next week, Tuesday? Same time? Okay, so um, to review this. Does that work for you, Joanne? No, we work for you on Tuesdays. Okay. Okay. Does Wednesday work for people then? Wednesday? Thumbs up <laughs> across the board. <laughs> Six o'clock. Okay. 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 What's and the date of that? That's we'll have a, you can shoot us some a draft. We can have a look at it in advance and that's the twenty second. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Can I ask a quick question? Um, like when I've gone into places like Dunkin' Donuts or something, did, shouldn't they all be wearing masks behind the counter too? Not right now. No, so workers don't have to at this point, but once we mandate this, they will. Okay. okay. Right, Market Basket is making their employees wear masks okay. as is CVS, but I think okay. it's up to each company at this point. Okay, but once we mandate it, that means, you know, employees and and people who come in okay thank you um well that's what we write okay well that would make sense okay okay all right i'll get that together that gives you enough time to do get a draft together and post yes yeah, so i'll be able to get it to you by friday the draft Okay, and just get the meeting posted in time. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you, Ray. Yep. Sure. Um, our next agenda item then. Before okay, so yeah, the next agenda item is um, personnel updates. I just wanted to let you all know um, the admin, um, Laurie, our administrative assistant, has moved moved on semi retirement, so her spot is been vacant for for some time now, end of July, she left. Uh, so the human resource department has just let me know that her position was posted this morning and uh, it's been quite a process. I know Jeff had made some changes to her job description, excuse me, to the job description. And um, those were approved by the human resource department, the union, and again, uh, an ad was put together, which you have in your packet. And so that position was posted this morning. That will be out till two weeks. That'll be out till the 27th. And then hopefully we will have some applicants that we can interview. Um, also, I just wanted to let you know that we, we do need some help with, with having the human, the, excuse me, health director's position, the admin's position, both vacant. We do need some extra help with plan review so we have reached out to a couple different organizations to see if they can help with that i do have a request form order in to fincom which meets in two weeks to see if we can get that approved and, and bring someone on board to help with consulting um, so that is that the other items there are three positions through the grant which is the Public Health Shared Excellence Grant. There are three positions. The Accreditation Coordinator is one. The Grant Management Coordinator is two. And that procurement process just took place last week. Stephanie was in attendance um, for the review process. Um, and that has been awarded to b &E Strategies. So they are going to go in front of the select board, that approval. And as soon as that happens, we can bring them on board. There is a third position in that grant, and that is called the Community Health and Wellness Coordinator. We have received four applications with that job description, and those interviews need to take place. Um, I know the Town and Safety Task Force just today approved their, uh, well, I should say they approved their draft uh, community health and wellness position, um, and there's some talk of maybe that going into our department. We'll see what happens. So there's quite a bit of happening with personnel. Um, I just want to make sure that you know what's happening and what positions are still vacant. Abby, Arnie, um, 
myself and Nancy Burns have been working really hard. <laughs> Nancy Burns has been wonderful in, in helping our department a few hours a week. And we have recently brought Laurie back. Uh, she's helping five hours a week, which has been tremendous with helping with us with billing. So um, if you have any questions with that regard, by all means, let me know. Thank you, Ray. Um... <laughs> You guys have a lot on your plates right now and you're doing a great job and we really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. I guess we might mention at this point that, or ask, so previously Zach and Sue were going to be on a, what do you call it? A subcommittee to look at the health director hiring in the health director position. So do you still have that time or are you overwhelmed? Um. I'm a little overwhelmed. <laughs> would you like me? I'm, I'm. <laughs> can you, can, yeah, I would be grateful. Thank you. <laughs> okay. I, I can, if people are amenable to that, I will work with Zach then on that. Um, because you have the schools and the contact tracing and everything else going on. Amazing. Thank I, you. Would, I just want to um, make sure that it's known that for the, the shared grant, Positions, those three positions that, that you talked about, um, it's shared amongst four communities. So if anybody's listening, these are full time in Westford um, positions. So I don't want people thinking like there's you know nine people coming into the health department. Um, no, I, I thank you for for clarifying that. Um, yes, the accreditation coordinator and the grant manager will both be remote positions. And um, that is absolutely true. This grant was put together with four communities, Westford being one of the four. And so we're very excited to get started. Um, the other thing I just wanted to mention as far as personnel is due to the in increase in cases, um, we have two school nurses that have been incredible, Sue being one of them, and Kathy Burdell, who has helped us with our contact tracing. Our public health nurse gets on the phone at 8.01 and she doesn't get off till 4.02 with constant contact tracing cases. So um, we have reached out to see what additional help we can get with that um, for, to, through the MRC. We've talked to HR to see if we can bring in more nurses um, and what kind of funding is available to pay them to do so. Um, I don't know if Sue wants to add anything to that, but. I just wanted to mention that, that contact tracing is a big part of what we're doing these days and that um, not only with the vacant positions, but we, we are looking into more help with the, to keep track. Each call is about 45 to an hour. And so um, you could see where with just one person, it, it's, it's a spider web of, of calls, so. But it's not, you know, it's one, you know, one each case is an hour or so, but it, it's not as though you just right. call once and that's the end of it. You are you have them for the full 10 days until they're out of isolation. And, and you know sometimes you'll then find out another family member tested positive and then you're linking cases or there's an outbreak here. And it is, unless you've, and I know Stephanie, you're shaking your head because you did see, you did the contact tracing collaborative, the CTC. It is, people have no idea how much work it is. And even to find a phone call, you know, or get, you know, you leave a message, they don't call you back. You, then you get another phone number. It is, it is so much work that people just, it's not just making a call. And, and I think sometimes with some of the people that I've talked to along the way, it's like, you're a lifeline for them too, you know? And, and for some of them, I mean, I've sent them to the hospital. I'm saying, I'm not, I'm uncomfortable with what you're saying to me. You need to go to that, you know, so, there's so much more to it than people realize. And, and, I, and I really do think that, the, that you know, there is money from federal grants that, is, that it's gotta be used for this. It is just, it's not sustainable for Gail, um, for me, for Kathy, for Ray, or, or, and volunteers like Ray and I were talking about this. Who would wanna volunteer to do this? It's overwhelming. It's not a simple thing. So I, I just, I think right now we're in a pandemic and there is federal money and that federal money has to start being used to support, you know, medical staff that are necessary. Thanks Sue. And I, yeah, I think it's important. You know, we hear a lot about how overwhelmed the medical professionals in the hospitals and places are, but we don't hear how overwhelmed our health departments are, but 
it's boots on the ground here and it's a lot of work and it is overwhelming and thank you thank you so much all of you and our health department team working on this we really appreciate all of you thank you um okay so new business and as we head into new business i'm going to read in a question that was asked that we didn't get to when we were discussing COVID because I think it's a good one. Uh, he said, could you pass a resolution? This is Matt Edwards. Could you pass a resolution reiterating a recommendation for masking indoors pending an official mandate? I think that's a terrific idea um, to just that the health, I. So I don't know, can I make a, <laughs> a um, recommendation that we recommend that people mask indoors pending an official indoor mandate? I would support that. Um, yeah, it's just, I it, mean, recommendation. We don't do resolutions, but I mean, we can, yeah, vote on a recommendation. Right, we can make a, re a recommendation. Okay, right. So. I propose that the health department make a recommendation that people mask indoors pending an official mask indoor mask mandate. That way people know what's coming. Pardon? They know what's coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is there a second? Second. Zach seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Thank you. Okay. And then on to the other new business. <laughs> Okay, no problem. Um, I just wanted to let you all know on top of it, there's a um, brand new state immunization clinic software called Color. Um, in the past, when you went to a flu clinic or COVID clinic, shingles clinic, you were able to use um, paper. Now uh, it's a state mandated requirement that you use this software. So any clinic that's run in the state of Massachusetts needs to use a software system, which needs to be learned and trained and whatnot. So um, right now, Gail, myself, and our MRC coordinator, which is Nancy Burns, is learning the software so that we are able to provide a first clinic. Our first clinic here in Westford is going to be at the Franco-American Club. Uh, we have posted that information both on our Facebook page, social media pages. Uh, there has been a glitch already uh, with the appointment list and we are working on that and we have taken all the contacts that have called into the health department to get that straightened out. So um, just wanted you to be aware of that new software and the 2023 budget and annual town reports are also due this week and next week. So I will be sending that information out to you to all of you so that you have that. In the past, the MRC has not um, contributed to the packet and I've asked Nancy Burns if she could maybe put a couple of bullets together or whatnot just so that the public is transparent they can see what the Merrimack um, Reserve Corps is doing for their community as well as for the state and so she was really excited to do that and list some of the events and things that are taking place and that are happening and there's quite a few actually so that is also in the packet uh, interface update so interface is our software here in Westford for anyone that's looking for any kind of resource with regard to substance abuse, mental abuse, um, needs any extra help or guidance in finding uh, therapists. I, I don't know if Stu, if you had anything to add on that, but I wanted to mention that uh, we have requested as part of the American Rescue Act, which is a little over $7 million that's coming here to Westford, uh, that that be part of the budget process for that. Um, and so we are, we're waiting on that to see if that's going to be approved. And um, I don't know, Sue, if you want to add anything. It is why I want to thank you. You know, we've had this service in town for 10 years and um, it has, the school system has supported it, but quite honestly, it has never been supported by the town. Um, we've tried to get town money to go towards it. So Ray, I'm very grateful that you, you're advocating on behalf of this. It's a service that you know, when I'm part of that uh, task force, the the, uh, the 
the town and school-wide health and safety task force. And one thing that has always bothered me when I see the services that we have in town and they always list in interface and yet it has never been supported financially by the town. Um, so I am really grateful and I hope that this, I, you know, I want this to be sustainable when I'm gone because um, I have been the one getting the funding for this for the past 10 years and it really shouldn't be on one person. It should be on uh, the school and the town to, to be supporting this, which has been a great service for the families that we have. And we all know that during the pandemic, mental health has gone, it, the stress and anxiety level in not just you know students, but in, in uh, adults and, and the elderly is just sky high. So it's a much needed service. And I really appreciate the fact that you are trying to get a financial support for it, Ray. Thank you, thank you. Certainly, certainly. Um, and then for old business, I just wanted to mention 472 Groton Road, which is um, an ongoing housing case, uh, as you're aware, uh, that has been in and out of court. So um, this is the home. It was a three floor home that caught on fire a little over a year and a half now now. And we've been in court um, with the owner and the receiver. So uh, last update was the, re the courts approved Mr. DiDonato, Charles DiDonato, who was the owner of the property, to have the property demolished. He had 60 days to do so, um, not only to apply for the permits and to meet all the requirements, but to have the building leveled um, in agreement with the courts and the receiver. Um, 60 days is just going by. And so we reached out to town council um, to ask for next steps whether it's liens, the town takes on the cost, gets reimbursed. So we're working with town council and the Northeast Housing Court to see what's happening with that. So I just wanted to give you a quick update because I know it's been a little bit since you've heard about that, but that is actively ongoing in the background. So um, can I just ask, Ray, do you think sure. that it, it is moving forward or and with just some delays or is it like just stalled? Well, I, I did speak with the owner um, a couple of weeks ago, maybe three or four weeks ago, just to remind him, you know, just because the courts are always, um, they always want to give a little more time. They always want to make sure everyone was properly notified. And so um, I did reach out to him just as a courtesy to say, you know, you know, he's a nice gentleman, an older gentleman. Um, he said he was working on it actively. Um, but court is a necessity in this case to keep this gentleman um, on track. And so we, like I said, we are actively working with both town council and uh, the courts to make sure that, you know, this, the resolution comes to, uh, for a lot of insurances and fires, it can take years, years before all the insurance claims and things are worked out. I know we have a couple of restaurants here in town that have had fires and issues. Um, so the fact that it, it is coming along, not as quick as we'd like it to, um, certainly because it's such a process, but uh, we are working with, with our town council. They are the advocates that are in the courts doing so. Thank you. Sure. Okay. And I think that's it, unless you have anything else or questions. I just have one quick question. Mm -hmm. Am I responsible for the minutes for executive session only or the entire meeting? Just executive, I think. Correct. Oh, okay. phew. Exactly. <laughs> uh, this is being recorded and all the comments and questions uh, will be posted with the minutes. Um, I know from the joint meeting, I didn't mention this in the beginning because of uh, the IT logging us on, but the joint meeting minutes, as uh, soon as the school departments finish with those, I'll certainly make sure that you have those for the next meeting. And, and where and did I, executive session minutes go? I'm sorry? Where did the executive session minutes go? Um, yeah, I will find out on that. Um, <laughs> I will find out. I, they, I, would, I would guess they'd go to Alyssa, who does our, our other Board of Health minutes, and I just would you know, see them. Um, but I will double check with them. I can't remember last time they got put away somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Held, they get held until whatever the subject matter is, is resolved, and then they are released. OK. Okay. And uh, yeah, thank you so much because, you know, not only my first meeting by myself here, um, but brand new software. I use Zoom all the time, but I've never been the host. So I appreciate the opportunity. Good job, Ray. Thank you, Ray. Great job. Thank you, Ray. Awesome job, Ray.
Awesome. Uh, we're not hosting either. We're just sitting here. <laughs> yeah. Who, who can't remember that? to unmute. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to make a motion to adjourn? I'll make, I'll make it. Motion. <laughs> Michelle's hands first. Michelle makes the motion. Is there a second? <laughs> second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. <laughs>